When it rains, it pours. And unfortunately, the Devils came away on the losing end against the Lightning a couple days ago by a score of 6-3. to three, And Nico Heischer wasn't too pleased by the performance from his team. However, I still think there are some positive solutions that the Devils can look to at the conclusion of the All-Star break. We have a lot to break down in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. Your Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. Elias scores! Oh, Steven stepped up, nailed him. rodor has got the puck. What a shot. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, Kyle Chalky, Plug, a play announcer. Devils right for Pucks and Pitchforks and also part-time credential me a member, Trey Matthews. All right, so it is officially the all-star break. The New Jersey Devils will be on hiatus for the next few days. And I've been saying the last few episodes, if any team needed a break, it was this Devils team because they need to get healthy and they need to start making a push to the playoffs. So in their more recent game against the Tampa Bay Lightning, they came out on the losing end by a score of 6-3. to three. Now, the scoreboard doesn't do it justice. The Devils were very competitive in the third period. Unfortunately, they let it slip right past them. And it seems like everyone is on edge right now because Nico Heischer took to the media post game and he looked a little defeated. Not only that, he seemed frustrated. He wasn't sugarcoating anything. And he even said that some people need to look in the mirror if they really want to be a part of something because this Devils team is far too talented and far too stacked to not be a playoff team. So in today's episode, in the first segment, we're going to go back a couple days to their game against the Tampa Bay Lightning. What went wrong? This is not going to be a normal post-game recap because I don't think anyone really cares about the game since it happened a few days ago and I'm a couple days late to it. But in the second segment, we are going to play Nico Heischer's soundbite post-game And I'll give you guys some more in-depth thoughts to it. And should the Devils really be concerned at this point? And then in the third and final segment, this episode, we're going to talk about the Devils' problems, obviously. But why not some solutions? Because I think another thing that the Devils need, aside from maybe a new goalie and also a solid defenseman to give them some more depth, is probably another face-off department kind of player. Because... Uh, with the loss of a certain player due to uh, certain circumstances that we're not going to get into, the Devils lost a player that was very good in the faceoff department and was leading the team and was actually on pace to have the best faceoff win percentage in a season in NHL history. He was on pace to do so, and that wasn't really talked about uh, enough. And right now, the Devils are kind of faltering in that stat a little bit more, but. There's some solutions, and I think uh, a lot of people don't really uh, know it. So let's start off with uh, this quick game recap. So in the first period in, when the Devils were taking on the Lightning, honestly, it wasn't the Devils' best showing from the get-go, but they still played much better compared to their game against the Carolina Hurricanes because the thing is is that the Devils have allowed the first goal of the game now 34 times out of 47 games. For any of you who are not really good at math like myself, that's 72% of the games. That's almost three quarters. So the Devils really got to work on just trying to make sure that they don't allow their opposition to score the first goal of the game. And I thought they did a decent job of doing so. They killed off a penalty uh, towards the end of period one. So I was just like, okay, this is a good sign. Wasn't the strongest of showings, but it was still somewhat solid. And I thought the Devils could build on that a little bit more. Boy, was I dead wrong. Because in the second period, the story was the shots and also the rebound control. But just a full disclaimer, it was not on BTEC Vancheck. So in the second period, the shots on goal differential, 19-4 to in favor of the Lightning. That is unacceptable. And I said this on social media, and I don't know about you guys, but I enjoy listening to Bill Spaulding on TV. I think he's done a great job of replacing Steve Cangelosi. He definitely has his own style of uh, calling hockey games, and I think uh, he's done a pretty good job filling in the shoes that Kanji left uh, a few years ago. But the thing is, is that I'd say one of his most iconic catchphrases this season is, rebound, they score. Because that's been the epitome of what's been happening with the Devils. 
poor rebound control. So when we look at the two goals that they led up to Nick Paul and also Brandon Hagel, it, both instances is when the Devils just did not have good rebound control. But this time around, it was not on Vitek Vanacek because Vanacek did his job initially, which is he either made the leg pad save or whatever type of save he needed to make sure that the puck didn't find the back of the net. And both instances, the Devils just failed to corral the puck and clear it on down. And this is something that I talked about in the previous matchup prior to the Lightning game against the Hurricanes, and I probably talked about it a bunch more, but it seems as though the Devils give their opposition uh, a boatload of lives. Like, they're like a cat with nine lives, and unfortunately, the Devils are just, like, treading on water in that instance because you're leaving your, your skaters very vulnerable and you're leaving your netminder very vulnerable because you're you're making it a lot more difficult on, on yourself, and that's the simple way that I could put it. So the Devils have got to work on clearing the zone and just trying to go back on the attack. Otherwise, you're going to have tired legs and you're going to have a goaltender that's going the extra mile to try to keep you in the game. So I remember the first go round against Tampa Bay Lightning, I put the loss heavily on Vitek Vanacek because he didn't make the saves that he was supposed to make. But in game two against uh, the Lightning this season, I cannot put it on Vanacek. I think he did a pretty good job in between the pipes. Now, Let's talk about the third period because this is where the Devils started to get some new life, but it seemed like the Lightning were so determined to make sure that the Devils uh, lost by at least two goals because Andre Palat, thanks to Seteri Hataka, keeping the offensive possession alive and getting his first point of the season, Palat was able to cut the deficit to one, but it was very short-lived because Stamko scored down to the other side of the rink and it was Three to one. And I, that was like within a minute of each other, literally like Andre Pilat scored his goal two minutes and 49 seconds into the period. And then Stamco scored his respective goal three minutes and 49 seconds into uh, the period. So a minute differential between those goals. Once again, the defense is just non-existent for Devils and uh, they have to rely solely on their offense. But we'll talk about that. Uh, in the second segment, then Jesper Brad, he had some decent speed going his way and he just squeaked it right past Vasilevsky. And worth mentioning that Jesper Brad now has 50 points in 47 game appearances. So uh, that all star stub is just looking worse and worse and worse. But anyway, digressing a little bit. So Devils cut it three to two. So it seemed like the Devils were once again putting themselves in a prime position to try to amount the comeback because. Jesper Bratt, he scored his goal relatively early into the period. So the Devils still had some significant time to try to tie the game. But Kevin Ball had a great assist. Unfortunately, it was to the Lightning because what had happened was that Vitek Vancek elected to play the puck. He came out of his crease to play it below the goal line. Kevin Ball gets possession of the puck. And unfortunately, Ball passed it right over to an open Braden Point. And Point got an easy shot on Vitek Vancek because Vancek was taking his time to get the puck. And originally, I put the blame on Vancek because I'm just like, oh, man, Vitek, you got to hustle. You got to run back to your post to, to get yourself into a prime position. But when looking back on the replay, that is 100% on Kevin Ball for allowing Point to score that. And it was 4-2, to and that took the wind out of the Devil's sails. But they tried their best because the Devils pull Vitek Vancek to get the extra attacker out. And usually the Devils aren't really all that good when they pull the goalie to get the extra skater. But this time around, it actually worked for them because what I saw Shimon the Mets do, he did something that Radish did earlier in the game, which is he released a great shot off of his twig and went out in front of Vasilevsky and tied to Foley, right place, right time, put it on in. So this is something that I talked about in the previous episode when discussing to Foley and how he fits in with the Devils. That's the epitome of how to fully fits in with the Devils, despite not being the best skater out there. He knows how to use his head. He knows how to use his mind and he knows where to position himself. So he was right there near the net of Vasilevsky and Shimon Metz was channeling his inner Dougie Hamilton by creating a, a good look for not only himself, but his teammates. And this time around, his teammate actually finished and the Mets got his 11th assist of the season, bumping his total up to 13. So that was a, a great play by uh, the Devils. But something I don't understand is that uh, when the Lightning got the empty netter goal by Hagel to make it a five to three game, why did Lindy Ruff pull Vancheck once again? Like, did he think that was going to make an ounce of difference? Because the game is essentially over once the opposition gets the empty netter goal. You're still down by two. And there's only like what, like a few minutes remaining in the game. So 
I don't really know. I, I didn't really agree with that play call. So uh, Lightning, thanks to Point, uh, getting his uh, second goal of the game, similar to Hagel, he made it a 6-3 game. And this, like I said, the scoreboard doesn't do it justice because uh, one of those empty netter goals really shouldn't have happened. I did not agree with the play call in that sort of aspect because, like I said, when a team gets the empty netter goal, that's usually the final nail in the coffin. But I've seen crazier things happen. But all in all, when looking at this loss for Devils, they were pretty shorthanded because Eric Holla did not play in the game against Lightning because he and his wife were expecting uh, their second child. So congratulations to them. And also, I saw the jokes on social media. And to be honest, I chimed in, too, because around this time, nine months ago, the Devils had won three straight games against New York Rangers in round one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. So have fun with whatever conspiracy you want to uh, put together. But I, I found it quite hilarious. But anyway, going back on topic, the Devils were shorthanded. And after this win, the Lightning had won eight of their last nine. So they're one of the hottest teams in the NHL. And when going back to January 11th, the last time the Devils played against the Lightning, the Lightning have really done really well. Ever since then, on the power play, the Lightning had a percentage of 42.9%, which is first in the NHL. Penalty kill, 84.6%, first in the NHL as well. Goal differential, plus 16, leads the NHL as well. So the Lightning definitely came in storming against the Devils because they had a lot of momentum going their way. And unfortunately, Devils, little to nothing. And goes back to what I said, which is Devils, all offense, no defense, and shaky goaltending. But I want to close the segment out on this note. It is not Vitek Vanchek's fault for what happened because he was making those crucial saves. Unfortunately, the defense in front of him, not really all that good. That's to be expected. But I want to be even in this sort of aspect because I've been defending Nico Dawes the last few times he's been in net, and I got to do the same thing for VTech. And in my honest opinion, I don't think this loss is on VTech. So we're going to talk about Nico Heischer and what he said to the media post game. But before we continue, let me tell you guys about eBay Motors. So passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Okay, let's listen into what Captain Nico Heischer had to say post game to Amanda Stein shortly after the Devils lost six to three to Lightning. Check it out. So the look on your face kind of says it all. It has to be an extremely disappointing performance from you guys, especially in those first two periods. Yeah, disappointing and. Uh... I'm embarrassed a bit, to be honest. Uh, just our work, our play, and uh, such a big game, and the way we performed it, seriously. We talked so much yesterday about you know needing to have that extra boost. Why are why are these things not happening for you guys right now? It's a good question. I wish I could answer that. Um, just not good enough. But gotta calm down here and uh, think about it. Uh, I don't have the answer for that right now. When it comes to that third period, obviously that late push, but it just felt that every time you guys gained any sort of momentum, they would push back. Is that sort of just not being able to match that intensity that we talked about? Oh, yeah, it's just it was just all around another good game from us. And uh, we, we need the motion on the bench. Uh, we were dead first and second period, and even the third. Uh, we had a few good shifts, but I think we got to play with it a little bit uh, emotion and sometimes we pissed off and uh, I think we were just too soft and uh, tonight in front of our net and uh, that's where they scored their goals. Okay, so a couple of my main takeaways from that soundbite. One, embarrassed. That's a good word to describe it because I think how the Devils lose sometimes is in embarrassing fashion, especially when they're right there. Now, did they deserve to win the game against the Lightning? Most likely not because the Lightning were obviously the more dominant team, but they still gave themselves a chance, but they kept shooting themselves in the foot, especially in that third period when it was just a back and forth affair because I jokingly said the Lightning were on a mission to make sure that the Devils lost by at least two goals. So that's a key takeaway that we're going to discuss momentarily. If you want to be a part of something special, you, you need to take a good look in the mirror. And Nico said, 
that he is no exception. So everyone has their own opinion. Everyone loves, loves to speculate. Everyone wants to say like, oh, does this mean Lindy's going to be fired? Or does this mean a move is pending for the Devils? No, I, I don't really think that, that it's any of those things. I just think that Nico, like a lot of people who have played sports at the conclusion of a loss, is just very frustrated because it's been a very up and down season for the Devils. But the one thing that I want to reiterate is that I don't think the Devils are necessarily in panic mode for the time being. Yes, you're starting to get a little concerned. They're getting there, but they're not quite there. And I think this break can be very refreshing for them. So speaking of which, I think this break is very good for Devils because it's just like they need to hit the reset button because it's in their head a little bit. And it's shown in some of their play because sometimes they come out with no energy. They're a little lethargic. And I think it sometimes goes back to the amount of injuries they're dealing with because that top line in the previous matchup against the Lightning, Timo Meyer, Jesper Brad, Nico Heischer, it took them a while to get going. In fact, I think Timo Meyer was benched at one point, and Nico Heischer and Jesper Brad, they got it going in the third period. So it, it's not just like the bottom six guys, or it's everyone up and down the lineup because sometimes it's hard for everyone to get involved, especially when you're trying to form chemistry with one another. But it seems like it's a revolving door to the ER or the doctor's office or the trainer's office because the Devils have been dealing with so much injuries. And unfortunately, like I've been saying the past couple of episodes, the Devils have to rely mostly on their offense. So I said if they really want to win these games against the Hurricanes, against the Lightning, against the Golden Knights, all these top-notch opponents, they're going to have to rely only on their offense because, unfortunately, their defense is not really all that good. They don't have that much depth. And I love Santeri Hataka. I love Shimon Nemetz. I love Luke Hughes. Uh, I, I love what Colin Miller has done this season. But they're missing a whole lot of bodies. So if your top four defensemen are Kevin Ball, Shimon Nemetz, Luke Hughes, and John Marino, that's your defensive combinations, then you that's not a recipe to succeed because – theoretically you need a main point getter and unfortunately uh you you don't want to put too much pressure on the Mets or Hughes at because they're still rookies they're still trying to get accustomed to the NHL and they're going to hit that rookie wall soon because there's going to be a stretch of games in which you forget that the Mets and Hughes are out there and the thing is that I also want to give credit to Luke Hughes because I think he stepped up his defensive game the past couple outings but uh digressing a little bit it's just like the defense is just not all that good for right now. And the goaltending, even though Banchek, I, in my opinion, is not to be blamed for the overall loss, still shaky. Like, he still has a lot to prove. So I can understand why Nico Heischer is frustrated, and it's justifiable. But at the same time, I don't think we should be hitting the panic button just yet. But, yes, we're, we're sort of creeping in on the red of being concerned because when looking at the uh, uh, wild card standings, the Devils are six points behind the Detroit Red Wings. Ahead of them are the Pittsburgh Penguins, who also have 51 points, the Islanders with 52 points, but the Red Wings have 57, and the Toronto Maple Leafs have 58. Now, when looking at the Metropolitan Division, a, in which I still think the Devils can become a top three Metro team, but they're they're starting to slip a little bit, uh, the Rangers have 63, Hurricanes have 61, the Flyers have 56, but the Flyers are on a five-game losing streak. And similar to what's been going on with the Devils, I think we've all seen the news, but the Flyers, for obvious reasons, have lost their starting goalie in Carter Hart. So that's also going to hurt them a little bit. So it's just like the Flyers are on a five-game losing streak, and it seems like they're starting to sink, and the Devils aren't taking advantage of that opportunity. Because when looking at the other teams surrounding the Devils, the Islanders are on a three-game losing streak. They have 52 points. The Penguins won their more, more recent matchup, and they have 51 points. The Devils have lost their last couple of outings, and they have 51 points. The Capitals are on a four-game losing streak, and they still have 51 points. And you're starting to see those top two teams, the Rangers and the Hurricanes, they're starting to run away with it a little bit more because now the, the Rangers, they are 12 points to the good for the Devils, and the Hurricanes are 10 points. So now it's like that, that chance of the Devils just trying to become a top three team, it starts to shrink and shrink just a little bit. but they're lucky that the Flyers are starting to sink a little bit. So it's still anybody's game in the Metro, and obviously it's still anyone's game in the wild card. So is it time to be concerned? No. And also factor in, like I said in segment one, Devils are dealing with a lot of injuries, and a lot of players that should be playing aren't playing right now. So the fact that the Devils are still within striking distance, and yet they're missing like their best player in Jack Hughes, I think that kind of speaks volume as to what their potential is. So 
I get why everyone is concerned. I get why Nico Heischer is frustrated. And I'm not going to sit here and speculate and say that he wants someone gone or something like that, because he even himself said that he needs to look in the mirror to be better and try to be a part of something special because everyone needs to come together. Someone needs to rally the troops and he has every right to feel embarrassed. And I'm sure a lot of devil's fans, devil's media, we're all embarrassed at this point because it's just like, it's just like the devils are still a, decent team and they still have some decent assets but unfortunately this is just the hand that they're being dealt with for the time being so we're going to talk about some potential solutions for the devils momentarily but before we continue i want to tell you guys about FanDuel because my detroit lions let me down but happy super bowl to all those who celebrate from FanDuel, america's number one sports book if you're like me super bowl sunday is all about scoring the best seats on the couch grabbing your favorite football snacks and placing some super bets now, here's my thing. I don't know who's the favorite at this point, but ABC, anybody but Chiefs, please. FanDuel has so many ways you can uh, end the season with a W or two or three. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score the most touchdowns, uh, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers join today, and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports partner of the NFL. Okay, so like I said in the previous segment, people are concerned and they have the right to be concerned. But let's look at some potential solutions, like just a couple big ones. So one of the things that the Devils are going to need, they're going to need someone who is good in the face-off department because, unfortunately, this is where they start to slide on down because they're missing their fa- their best uh, player who was good at winning face-offs. But like I said in segment one, we're not going to talk about it. Uh, but here's a potential replacement, and he's been on the LTIR since earlier this month, and that is Tomas Nosek because it's worth mentioning that Nosek finished third on the Boston Bruins in face-off win percentage with a percentage of 59.3%. And he also had 69 blocks and 31 hits. And 10 years of being in the NHL, Nosek has never missed the playoffs. He's similar to Eric Halla because Eric Halla has only missed the playoffs once, and that was due to injury because he was playing for the Vegas Golden Knights at the time, and the Golden Knights still made it to the playoffs. So Nosek has that experience, and he was third on a Boston Bruins team in face-off win percentage, that same Boston Bruins team that uh, beat the record for most wins and points in a single season. So I think people are underestimating Nosek and his capabilities of being a good face-off player. Now, obviously, it's a big void to fill, but I think he's capable of saving face at this point for Devils because face-offs are very important. And now, here's the big solution, Jack Hughes. So I said in the previous segment, the fact that the Devils are still within striking distance of a playoff position, and yet Jack Hughes has not played since earlier in January in that game against the Chicago Blackhawks, I think it really speaks volume to how this Devils team can be. So my thing is like patience because the Devils might be down, but they're not out. They still have a chance. So when people are saying that this season is over or this season is a wrap, no, let's just go into the all-star break, get rested, recovered, and see what players come back added onto the roster for Devils because Jack Hughes, uh, will he play in the all-star game? We don't really know. But if he does, that's a good sign that he's ready to return uh, once the All-Star break concludes. So I think that uh, people just need to give it uh, some more time. I get it. Time is not really on the devil's side in this case because every win is so vital and they've left a lot of points on the board. But at the same time, I just think that they're going to be okay for a time being, especially if Jack Hughes comes back, because that's the engine that makes the car drive for the devils in this case. So it's nice that they're getting like Andre Palat back. Uh, Bill Spalding said on air that uh, Tomas Nosek is projected to return real soon. But the main thing is Jack Hughes. That's what's really going to be crucial and vital for the Devils. So Nosek coming back and Hughes coming back, I think those are going to be two big fixes for the Devils because Nosek for the faceoffs and Jack Hughes for just getting the Devils their rhythm, their pace, and their speed back because I think that's been lacking in their overall offensive execution. But if you get Jack Hughes back out there slicing and dicing through defense, being a great playmaker, making the people around them better, I think that can definitely go a long way. So 
Let me know what you guys think. What did you think about the Devils' previous matchup against the Lightning? What did you like? What didn't you like? What did you think of Nico Heischer's soundbite? And what are some of your takeaways from it? And I'm curious to hear you guys' solutions as well. So I don't want to just hear your, your venting of problems, but let put out some solutions as well. How can the Devils improve their roster? And who coming off of IR will definitely help them? So leave a comment down below. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on podcast streaming service, hit me up on my personal X page app at TreyMap4 or the show's X page app at Locked On Devils. As for today's episode, that's all the time I have for you. So continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys next episode. Thanks for listening once again.